Let's get this going here. So yeah, this is what I've been recently been changing to add some more Grim Flares to the deck to make this a little more aggressive, which I like. Um, I just love this card, and it's it's. I think right now you need more threats in the format. Let me go some auto danger. Hey, how's it going, Mike? Um, yeah, I think you want this card in the format right now. It's just very aggressive. It's another threat. Um, update with versions and collection. I added a Kataki to this deck because this is just Tabernacle against the, uh, the whatever they are, the Lantern decks. So, yeah. Kind of the same thing we've been playing for a while. So yeah, Mike, I knew that if you if you ever came back to Magic and you wanted to play like a modern deck, I knew that you would like thoroughly appreciate um I knew you'd really like Grim Flare. That card just has like Mike LaFlame written all over it. Look at this thing. This thing is so sweet. It just like it's a, like a bear in the beginning that has upside that gets big, and then like it digs you into your it your uh, removal spells, your sideboard cards, and lets you mill lingering souls. So let's get back into what we know and love here. Oh, nice. Okay, so this hand is like absolutely dynamite if we hit a land. So we have two draws and 18 cards. And if we hit uh, two draws, 18 hits, if we hit a land, then our opponent's like absolutely dead. And this hand might be good enough where we can afford to not hit a land for a turn and still win. So I'm going to keep this. You going to play modern or standard there, Mike? There we go. We got our homeboy on one. Polluted Delta. Looks like we're playing against another five color shadow deck. I would say we're playing the mirror. Would not be surprised if my opponent takes a Death Shadow or takes any position. They took Team or Battle Rage. Wow. That seems egregious. I think I'd like to keep in limited. Moving to over there. I'm starting to play more Hearthstone too, just to get back into the card game spirit. Oh nice. So I'm gonna play out a Death Shadow because if we get to discard if we get to dismember something next turn, then we're gonna be able to crack for like under nine. If my opponent taps out here and we find a fetch land, they're dead. Which could be exactly what they're doing. Well, I guess they had to terminate. Okay. So here we get Overgrown 2. We don't have the stopping ground in our deck anymore. What is this? And then we're going to play Grim Flare. This card is the man. I think we're playing a Death Shadow Mirror. Like most decks don't play Polluted Delta and Wooded Foothills in them. And Jun, like, Polluted Delta and Wooded Foothills, you just don't find those together very often. Takes Dismember, and plays around Death Shadow, okay. That's pretty good. That gives us Delirium, too, so now... 
Okay. So I take my opponent to Tarmogoyf. I take my opponent to Tarmogoyf. Okay. Then this Death Shadow becomes... Then we traverse for a Street Wraith, cycle it. Yeah, so we're just going to take Tarm. So what is this? This is 5, 9, we go to 4. We're going to take Tarm, because right, we can do 5 damage to ourselves like this, 9, he has to block this. So we're going to take Tarmogoyf. Go get an Overgrown Tomb. Traverse for a Street Wraith. Cycle this street race. And then we get to set the top of our deck with Grim Flare also. So we're just going to find a removal spell and kill our opponent. That is the plan. And there's the removal spell. One, two. You always got to be careful when you do that. Because, like, if my Grim Flare would have been one point larger, the Death Shadow, so they put it on a three, the Death Shadow would have uh, been able to live through that. Which is a, just something you got to know about that card. All right, so we're playing the mirror. My deck's a little weaker in the mirror and how it's built. So what have you been up to, Mike? That you just got back into magic cards. You haven't been playing poker or anything like that? Dude, we know what's up. So we'll get rid of... The, I guess we should keep this, because we want green sources, because traversing for Tarmogoyf is super important. Yeah, dude, when it comes to Death Shadow, we know what's up. We know what's up. This hand's good. We just we're very threat dense. Uh, we don't have a discard spell, which is really the best thing to have. But you just got married. Who'd you get married to? Whew. God, our pose is so dead. Mishra's bobble. I don't think we want that. So let's go get. Probably get. We're just an Abzan deck at this point, so we can just get Overgrown Tomb. It doesn't matter. We'll just cast this on our opponent's turn, so if they have a discard spell, we get one more look at it. I guess, wait, did they put a card on top? They did put a card on top, so let's check out what this is. Let's see what our opponent here. opponent's got their own Tarmogoyf going on. So we can play... Lingering, so we can play Grim Flare. Now we're gonna play Grim Flare next time for sure. But My opponent's gonna puke. They have a Death Shadow. They got their own Death Shadow. Ooh, this is gonna get interesting. So I think I'm just gonna take their Tarmogoyf. And then go get Godless Shrine and yeah, our opponent's wicked dead. He's been working out, working, playing Xbox, but I'm uh, moving to Canton, kind of long story, but if I'm a kid. Yeah, you might as well, right? It's like winning Rome. Well, plus, Aaron's got himself a super sweet setup. You're going to have to scope it out for me. I can't wait to pulse this Death Shadow. This is a dangerous, dangerous thing to do. Because now my Death Shadow is even bigger than theirs is. Eh. 
Hey Gary, how you doing? So I can't kill my opponent. What? Where'd you add, Gary? So I can crack my opponent for five, which only kind of punishes me if I've, they have a team of Battle Rage. Alternatively, yeah, we're just going to hit my opponent for five and play Lingering Souls. My opponent goes like removal spell, removal spell. We're in trouble, but such is life. Oh, huh. God. So now we just... So now I'm just going to play Grim Flare, Fashback, Lingering Souls. And then we'll attack our opponent next turn. Just hope our opponent doesn't team or battle rage us. That's pretty cool. Thanks for, thanks for adding that, Gary. How's your streaming been going, Gary? I haven't popped into yours in a while. Look at that. Look at that. Opponent's, opponent comes into my dojo. Get out of here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stream tomorrow for a decent amount of time. Then I'm done for a while for the holidays. Yo, Mike, do you want to check something out that's sweet? You see my emote here? I'm going to get short. I don't recognize my opponent's name. But I would like to play first. And we'll keep this. We can do the old bobble trick. Look at our top card. Might stream some Holiday Cube tomorrow. You never know. But, like, everybody's going to stream Holiday Cube, so if I do that, I'm going to get, like, negative viewers. I don't think I want a Fatal Push. We want ourselves an Overgrown Tomb. Okay, there's the land we wanted. We didn't really want that land. But whatever. All right, so we will play... Hopefully we draw... If we draw a... Oh, wow. Oh, my opponent is so dead. My opponent's getting turn three out of this game. Okay, so... Fetch Shock, eight. Thought Seize, six. Not good. What I can do... Is fetch a basic thought seize to eight play death shadow have this street wraith cycle available to me which i kind of like that
So they're gonna take Boros Charm. I should have done this. I did this all wrong. I should have taken. I should have gonna take Boros Charm because that means my opponent probably taps out, and I have free reign to Team or Battle Rage. So yeah, we're gonna take Boros Charm. I did mess this all up. I should have thought Seize first. But as of right now, we can do five damage to ourselves, which makes this Death Shadow lethal with a team or battle rage when my opponent doesn't have anything to block with. All right, Goblin Guide, Swift Spear. All right, let's see what my opponent's drawing. Yeah, I think we might we might have tossed this game by going too aggressive. Yeah, there's the Boros Charm. So block, block, Monastery. Plays Monastery Swift Spear, and then we die exactly unless we go for it with this Teamer Battle Rage. So we're going to go like this. We do have to attack... Oh god, we just tossed it. And my opponent tossed it right back to me. Whatever. It played your outs, you know. I've never, so the deck that I've turned, I've been turned three by burn a lot, but I turn three burn a lot too. It's like the one deck that I, you know, I think a lot of people confuse that matchup. They think that like it's either favored in Death Shadow or not favored against Death Shadow. And I think that that's because of games like that. The games just commonly are not very close. Look at that, uh... Jess Fogg with the follow. Thank you very much. Oh, you just 5 0 with Mardo and then got nothing with Jess. The sadness. I'll oh, we'll keep this hand. It's not great, but we will keep it. You're talking like the Mardu Pyromancer deck? That's what you're looking. That's what we're playing these days. All right, so. This is our worst fetch land. We're going to preserve our life total plate a little slow because we don't have a death shadow. You're playing what's his name? Spell next list. Or self sec. What, who is this guy? This guy, modern, the modern champion by a million years. All right, I think I'm going to take Eidolon and then Thought sees this path to exile. My opponent did not bolt me. What do you think of the deck? Rift Bolt coming off Suspend, Sacred Foundry tapped. Because, like, I don't know. I think I have a critical... I'm pretty critical of that deck. Like, I do not think it's good. I think that guy just plays it well. And that guy plays a lot. Like, he's in the queues constantly. That's a little sad. We're going to have to effectively take five to deal with it. So I can just get tapped reading the pool. There's a way to deal with that. I mean, if you can play Blood Moon and a Clock, like, that's that's a recipe to win. So, I can fetch... Um, 
think I'm just going to fetch a tap breeding pool. Yeah. All right, let's get rid of this. So we know our opponent's two cards. So I do think I'm going to fetch shock for this Tarmogoyf. We're going to go to five. My opponent doesn't have a top deck that kills me, and then we're untapping with double stub. I'm going to get a watery grave too. If this is what I was going to do, I should have done it. I guess I still saved myself two life, but I, mean, I could have fetched Watery Grave and pushed, I guess. My opponent sent a bowl upstairs, sure. So you're saying that it's it's good because no one knows what's going on with it. I am going to play this Bloodstain Mire because getting access to red without a fetch land, without taking three is important. Because if we draw a team or battle rage, it just shaves a clock off this turn. Off this game, excuse me. Huh. Maybe we'll have to give this deck a shot. Because, like, I, I keep looking around with it, and no one is putting up results anywhere with it except this guy. Like, then no one else is really top it or. 5 0 -ing. Um, It's not like it's doing anything in GPs. It's not doing anything in the challenges or the PTQs. It's good because sideboard doesn't blow it. Yep. I mean, it's, it's got like the best sideboard in the format, right? Don't you get like Stony Silence um, and Blood Moon? Which, if you use Stony Silence and Blood Moon, then like. That's pretty much all you want to be doing. There's the best sideboard card. That's just a whole bunch of middle fingers. Okay, we got 12 people hanging out tonight. I hope everyone's having a good night. We're rebounding after getting absolutely ruined by in our teamer. We, we tried a donation teamer energy deck that splashed white, and that did not go very well. Oh, you can't sideboard against it. That makes sense. No, that makes sense. I struggle whenever I play against that deck, and I want to sideboard against it. Um, so that deck's just like... That deck's just got, like, what, seven or eight huge middle fingers in it, in the sideboard? There's a bunch of, like, you're not, you're not doing nothing. But yeah, so like I was saying, we are we are re uh, rebounding here with some Death Shadow, a little bit of my bread and butter. I played um, David Ochoa's Esper Death Shadow deck last night, and I kind of liked it. Yeah, I thought it was horrendously. I think it's horrendously like misbuilt. I love you, love huge middle fingers. Like so this is what I played last night. And I think it's probably like, I don't know, I think it's like five or six cards off. But I was a fan. I think you want a third Snapcaster Mage. I would probably cut like a push for it. Yeah, Faith is Looting when it discards those, all those cards and like, Faith is Looting is just insane in that deck. Because like it gets value off of it with the Bedlam Revelers and you don't even have to delve so it's not even like it's a delve card. Phil Collins, loser son. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining the stream. I appreciate your support. Phil Collins, loser son. That's awesome. So this hand is like, it's marginal. I really just, it's like against my religion to like happily keep hands without discard spells. And this is what we're gonna, this is what we're gonna do here. Scalding Tarn, is it is the weather getting bad? I 
And then we'll get Overgrown Tomb. Untapped. I do like to preserve my life total a little bit against Storm, which I assume this is. All right. That's all right, because I really don't want to just run my... If it's not Storm, I don't want to run my Tarmogoy face, for, face first into a Lightning Bolt. We are playing Storm, so I think I just take this Remand, because I can answer each one of these. I don't want them to like play off curve and have a Remand up for one of these and mess me up. I played two pretty tight matches against Storm in the PTQ last weekend. Not going to run their dude out. What am I looking for off this? I'm looking for... I'm not looking for a Death Shadow. I'm not really even going to jam this Liliana. I can play Tarmogoyf. What does playing Tarmogoyf do? Playing Tarmogoyf gives me a clock, and it is kind of unlikely my opponent kills me next turn. I think we're going to go like this. And I, mm, it is pretty good against Storm. The problem is that Storm turns into like a lower-to-the-ground burn deck after sideboard, and it gets a little more difficult. We have an awkward draw here. I really want to find a discard spell or another death shadow. But I don't think I'm going to win this game by not getting a threat down. So I'm going to play this threat and I'm not going to cycle my street wraith because my opponent might just like mini grape shot to kill this. There's there's a totally a chance that I don't get done tab next turn. But I really just like don't I hate not putting pressure on my opponent. And that's just like precisely what we are not doing at the moment. Yeah, my my oh, this uh this Death Shadow deck, this gen like the traverse based Death Shadow decks are the best decks in the format against combo decks. Like they just absolutely destroy combo decks. They struggle against other Fatal Push decks. Like, you just kind of get beat up a little bit. Like, the Abzan decks become like your big brother and they just give you nuggies. I just applied. I, I applied to uh, the Card Hoarder Network. You can look at there. You can, you can go look at Card Hoarder's, like, Twitch page and check it out. There's some requirements you have to hit. All right, so my opponent doesn't do anything again. This is interesting. All right, that's pretty good too. So let's go like this. My opponent might ritual into a, um, okay. So I think this is a pretty easy grape shot. Because nothing in my opponent's hand does anything. Manamorphose gives him a redraw. I'm really surprised my opponent didn't play out a cost reducer there just to free their mana up. But I guess like mana's not really going to be a problem once they find what they need. Light of hand's a good draw. <laughs> My opponent just refuses to play into this. So let's get in one more shot. And then I'm going to fetch and play a Death Shadow. And I feel really comfortable playing Death Shadow here because they've only gotten... 
they'd look at two new cards and they'd have to find basically their second or third copies um, of whatever that is uh, of Grape Shot here to kill me. And I don't even think that's going to do it. Because I can go like Cost Reducer on the stack. Manamorphos and a turn. Okay. Blue, blue. They're just like, they're just cycling their Manamorphos. Okay. Yeah, I just reached out to um, uh, Squad Chief. I just reached out to all the uh, um, all the all the Death Shadow decks, or not all the Death Shadow. I made I reached out to all the major bot chains, and a couple of them responded. Card Hoarder was the only one that picked me up on it. So we get a Card Hoarder. If you need Magic Online signals, that's where you should go. All right, so what is this? This is a ritual. So I'm probably gonna empty, like a little. My opponent's got f four cards, and I know. I think we just let. I think we get rid of this too. Just don't let anything resolve at like a lower rate here. Because my opponent could theoretically keep going. Oh no, that was stupid. Right. So my opponent, like, what do they do now? They play Brawl. Yeah, that was just stupid. Yeah, that was dumb. That was a bonehead move. That was one of those, if we hadn't worked 12 hours today, we might have given that one two thoughts before we did it. But we worked 12 hours today, so... Okay, so they've got. They need two spells to kill me. They can just, like, wrath my board, though, which would be sad. I feel like I definitely don't get in super quality streams during the week. Because with just, like, how work's been going, I tend to, like,. Yeah, there's the grape shot. So they're just going to wrath my board, right? No, he's going to... I mean, this is his last card. Another one? Do you find that? Do you find numbers two and three? Okay. So to say, let's, let's be reasonable. So I can traverse for Death Shadow, play Death Shadow, or I can play Liliana and start to like shut the door. Still better than about 90% of Magic streams. The real play happens on the weekends. On the weekends, I'm usually pretty on point. Okay, so our opponent's got Baral, and that's it. Oh, that was disgusting. So I'm going to actually ditch Abrupt Decay, traverse for Death Shadow, and play the Death Shadow. And our Death Shadow is conveniently not, or conveniently turns on Ferocious. 
It's like we're playing some combo deck here. God, if my opponent was just sitting on that too, this is like just so. I'm gonna be savage. Oh, I was gonna say we could get Grim Flare, but Grim Flare means I cannot play Stub. And this is where we we tighten the noose here. And then my opponent just doesn't have a top deck that wins them the game. Nope. Get that weak shit out of here. I like to think that I'm a part of the top 1%. The top 1% of Magic Online streams. I wonder how much. I wish I could see like a distribution of like the total views that Magic streams get and see what percentage of them are done by like Caleb Durward, you know, or like uh, what's his name? Um, Kenji or something like that. So this deck actually does the switcheroo after sideboard, which makes it a little difficult to play against. They actually sometimes cut all of their cost reducers and then to blank my removal. So bringing in collective brutalities, I like to cut one team or battle rage um, because this also answers uh, Electromancer. And this, these are my answers to Empty the Warrens and Liliana is still great. So this is what I usually like to do. Just... Give them the old switcheroo, because they try to do the switcheroo on me. This deck's, this hand's, this hand's very good, but I don't think that we can keep this so I get, yeah, I just can't, because if my opponent plays a cost reducer, if they kept them in their deck, I just, yeah, we're, we're going to be adults. This hand's worse, but all right. We can play Grim Flare on one. We're going to keep that because it's a redraw, and it enables Delirium. So this probably gets, this gets Overgrown Tomb, or we could get Blood Crib. We've. Yeah, we still have one teamer battle rage in my deck, so and we have the uh, whatever that big dumb moron is that zaps things. We have the zapper still in our deck, so we'll go get blood crypt. I I genuinely like a lot of people ask me why I don't play cards like Fulminator Mage or cards like Eidolon or Rhetoric in this five color build, and I think that. Traversing for a three drop, they put top top too. That's that's gross. Traversing for a three drop is genuinely like pretty much nonsense. They have brawl on top. That's uh, they kept in some of their creatures. Okay, so they do have an empty. So let's get rid of this pieces because that's going to refuel their hand back up. All right, there's the rage. Because this Grim Flare does work against uh, against this this uh, Empty the Warrens. My opponent should jam the Brawl, I think. Yeah. That was pretty good. So now I think I just thought sees the Empty. Just thought sees this. And then I'm going to play this tapped. There's no sense taking extra damage. When this is this game isn't going to be decided by by Death Shadows, I don't think. I think this game's going to be like a Grim Flare grind them out kind of game. And I'm going to play Grim Flare and I'm just going to team or battle rage it to get over this this brawl. Grim Flare does not give a crap. 
about this guy. This can get bolted, which would be sad, but you know, sad sad things happen in the world. The world can be a sad place. That was a pretty good draw. So let's get in here. Put of blocks. I'm probably going to go get... I think I'm going to get a basic... That's weird. Uh, I guess I'm just going to get Watery Grave. Now I need to get Delirium. That's like the number one... So I'm going to ditch this Death Shadow. I'm going to ditch all of these. Because then this turns on Delirium, which means my stub is active. And then we're just going to play another one of these guys. Michael Flame, if you're still watching, this card right here, this Grim Flare, man, it says your name written all over it. This is like the Michael Flame Invitational card. If you could have if you could have done it, it would have been it would have been that old Grim Flare. So now I need to figure out like what car what spells do I counter? Opponent just tosses it in. Both teams played hard. God, are we are we 3060? God. If we get a 5010. He wouldn't go that far, but I do like the card. It's just sweet. Like, it's a bear with text on it that in the late game is just really good. Like, this card, I was playing in the modern PTQ here online, and I was playing against Jeskai. Uh, Jeskai with, like, the Queller deck. And this card, I just traversed with this card, and it, like, won me the match. Because they couldn't deal with it, because I took care of their paths, and I just kept, like, attacking and milling over Lingering Souls and stacking my deck. Heater. So we want ourselves a land off the top. That is what we want here. All right, we didn't find it. So we're going to start off by inquisitioning our opponent after we check out their top card. Unclaimed territory. So we have mulliganed because stubborn denial has no text. God, they have the land on top too. So the scariest card is Thalia's Lieutenant. Because like these all suck. Except for this card. So we're gonna take Lieutenant. The Freebooter, like Noble Hierarch can like build an army. Land. Gosh. So now we're just going to take this freebooter. Opponent's freebooting. They're just going to be able to go triple hierarch this turn. And if we get a fetch land, then we have the delirium, which is sweet. There's that. There's another one. Augur9, thank you very much for the follow. I appreciate your support. Fetch land. Any land. God. Ask and you shall receive. Um, so we definitely want to get Blood Crypt because Team or Battle Rage is a real is like a real way to win this matchup. So we just gotta hope our opponent doesn't never draw as a Mantis Rider. 
Our opponent draws a Mantis Rider and just like hay sevens us. That'd be vomit inducing. All right, no attacks is good. Another ether vial. So I think it's worth trading damage here, especially considering I get to stack the top of my deck. I'll fetch this tapped, probably get another overgrown tomb. I'm not thought seizing my opponent. Because the only card they, they could have like a Thalia's Lieutenant here or a Thalia, and we'd be in a little bit of a rough spot, but we need to find action, and Grim Flayer is gonna find us action. Here. We always respond to the trigger by fetching so we don't mess up our scries or our top of our, our top of our library. Get overgrown tomb into play tapped. That's three cards that are garbage. And we'll pass. Thalia. Okay, so my opponent's going to be able to crack me for five. That card's going to be hard to block, which sucks. I'm going to need something like... Okay, so opponent drew a Horizon Canopy, which is just a redraw. Let's just build your own army here. Oh. All right, we're going to attack in again because, like, we can't block this thing. I guess Grim Flare chumps for a turn and lets me find an answer to the Thalia. It's just a time lock. Yeah, I mean, Grim Flare is just a speed bump. What I need is a Death Shadow. A Death Shadow would be sick. Because when your life total is low... What? That seems like a very awkward attack. I don't understand. I don't understand why they attacked with that. All right, well, there's there's something at least. Okay, next turn, we go to Chump Town, population Grim Flare. God, don't activate your ether vial, dude. Alright. Alright. I yield. I yield. So against humans. Come on. So against humans, I like Maelstrom Pulse. Is it Staticaster? Uh, I don't like these Stubborn Denials. And I don't really like Liliana the Veils. Though I'm on the play, so Liliana's probably okay. So this is what we want to do for sure. Thought season isn't very good. Collective Brutality at least kills something. Yeah, we'll probably go like this. Collective Brutality is just a removal spell. 
We'll probably bring our thought seizes back when we're on the draw because having one mana interaction against Thalia, or like to be able to kill, like to be able to like thought seize to, to get rid of her or something like that is pretty important. Yeah, I hope everyone's having a good time tonight. We're at 20 viewers here. After we got done playing standard, we jumped up a little bit. Which I probably should have known has happened, but... I'm going to ship this back. Alright, this hand's pretty explosive. We've got two lands, so we can play Tarmogoyf no matter what. <coughs> we effectively have three cracks at a land here, because we get this scry. Okay. So put that on top, and we play Death Shadow next turn too. Is three one seven any reference? No, um, the program three one seven is uh, I'm born on March seventeenth. So so that's my that's my uh, yeah three one seven is when uh, just my birthday. So hopefully we draw a fatal push. Off the top. If not, I'm gonna play Death Shadow and Traverse for the swamp. I still think I'm gonna play Death Shadow and Traverse for the swamp, because getting getting this Lily on the last hope in play can be could do some big game here. It could come back and bite me here. Like I said, if my opponent plays like a Thalia. No, no, sir. No, I live down in uh, Washington, D.C. In our nation's capital. The homeland. Now, if something weird goes on, like, is this a Reflector Mage? This feels like a Reflector Mage. Yeah. So I think I'm still going to get Liliana in play and hit this. It just sets up a really explosive turn next turn where I can go, like, Death Shadow, and I just slow down my opponent's mana. It's going to take a bit to get uh, for him to get at this Liliana, unless you guys got a, like, a untapped land Mantis Rider. He's got untapped land. All right. You got another human? Yeah. So we'll be able to snipe this. Then we, again, we just play Death Shadow and Tarmogoyf and Inquisition. Oh, we got it. Oh, we forgot about the Exalted. That sucks. So I'm going to get rid of the Mayor because I don't want another Anthem coming on. My opponent can Meddling Mage like... I doubt they're going to Meddling Mage Tarmogoyf. Play this big old Goyf. Play this big old Shadow. Our opponent's going to get plenty of looks at like... Because they've got two Canopies. Okay. So there's the canopy. 
Here's a meddling mage, probably. Yeah, here's a meddling mage. So we're looking for like another death shadow, team or battle rage, something that grows this Tarmogoyf. We're definitely in for we're in for a fight here. Cause like it's difficult for us to attack with this death shadow unless we draw a street wraith or a fetch land. Because then we're effectively trading the Death Shadow for either a Thalia's Lieutenant or a Reflector Mage, which isn't great. So that's not bad. What does it do, though? What does it actually do? It doesn't really do anything. So I think I'm going to attack with Goyf. Because I can do like three and... I can get rid of one of these creatures. I don't want to trade my Death Shadow with one of these. I was playing around. I guess they're worried about... I mean, Rage is a good name kind of in the dark. I, I would have named Fatal Push because I haven't cast one yet, and like it wouldn't be that odd for my opponent to think that I have four of those. Okay. Botanical Sanctum. So reflector mage. No, it's an magic mage. Okay. So yeah, 15 viewers. I hope everybody's having a good time. I hope everyone's enjoying the stream. So Tarmac Goyf can still attack. Both my Goyfs can still come in. Now I can attack with Death Shadow. Well, no, I can't really attack with, so I go block, block. I can attack with Death Shadow and a Tarmogoyf. Because I block this, collect a Brutality, one of these, and take five next turn. That kind of looks like the line of play. I guess I should attack with this the Death Shadow, and then we'll see what our opponent does. Because my opponent's going to have to throw away a lot of resources. And these Tarmogoyfs are really doing a really good job of holding down the fort. Blocks with the Hierarch. Okay. We're going to pass again. Damnation one time. Yo, whose side are you on? This is an Anafenza? Yeah, it's an Anafenza. So I will block this. To trade with it. Double block here. Snap it off. I would like to draw a team or battle rage. Okay, so block the Thalys Lieutenant. So if I go block here, block here, I take five, six, seven, so I can't even attack with this thing unless I brutality to use a removal spell. And then I can gain life. So I can go brutality this. I can attack with Death Shadow. Brutality, gain two life, let's just say, for shits and giggles. 
So my opponent probably chump block. Well, they chump blocked last turn, so I'm thinking they chump block this turn. We have drawn slightly awkward here, so that we can't really like we can't lean on our opponent a lot. I wonder if I go hit this before combat and attack with Death Shadow, if my opponent respects the block enough to throw a bunch of things under the bus. Because then I go block here, block here, take five next turn. I think if I hit this team or Battle Rage, <coughs> my opponent might try to play around. And I might be able to get an attack in with my Death Shadow. And the worst comes the worst, I can attack, they can double block here, I can trade, trade, then I've got Tarmogoy, two four fives versus a three two. I think I'm gonna try that. I don't really wanna sit around here. My opponent's got a bunch of uh um has a bunch of Whatever they are, they could draw into. Um, pop effects. My opponent can adequately play around Damnation or Team or Battle Rage. It doesn't take a lot. Hey man, some decks are just better at drawing lands than other decks are. So my opponent can play like if they just go like so the biggest thing I can make this on the board is nine. So they can put if they put five toughness in front of this, then this survive. So they just block here. They survive rage. If they double block here, they survive rage. Or they or they double block with anything. All right, so this is okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get rid of this Anafenza. And we're going to get rid of this. I might just get rid of this um, Meddling Mage because having Fatal Push available is really nice. And this 3-4 doesn't really matter. And I don't even have to fetch to do any damage. So I think we're just going to like do 6. Because this is nine from our opponent, so like we can't even save this. And our opponent has the biggest creature, but we have the next two. If my opponent hits like a, my opponent hits a Thalia's lieutenant, then then we in, we in all sorts of trouble. But then again, if we draw a Fatal Push, that all four canopies. All right, there's that. So I'm still just going to double block this if, I, if I'm presented the chance to. Then it's Tarmogoyf Verse. Something that plays the board. All right, that plays the board. It is one of our weaker board plays, but it is. Ironically, it makes it so that if we draw... Not ironically, that was the bad word for it. But if we draw an instant to kill... And all of our instants either kill a creature or smack our opponent, then we're going to be able... Our opponent will have to chump because our target will become four fives. Oh, 
what is this? Oh, that's bad. That's bad. Yeah. This game just got a lot harder. Double block, block, take six. Yeah, we're gonna move on to the next game here. We did. We just don't. We don't have an out in our deck for this. Oh, that's sad. That's all right though. My opponent played pretty well, I thought. Like, the way they blocked was adequate, I think. Like, they forced that Death Shadow trade. We got the two for one out of it, but uh, Moto's tweaking out. Moto's is, is having a hard time. Come on, little Moto. Come on, little Moto. You can do it. God, it's just rubbing in my face. We still get the 4 1 here. 4 1s are always good for the soul. I would like to play first. This hand's kind of gross, but like. I think we can get away with it because we have Rage and two Tarmogoyfs on the play. I mean, I'm not very thrilled about this, but if we draw like a Fatal, if we draw a discard spell, then this this hand's pretty good. All right, I mean that's a spell. Let's just go, you know, one, two, three. So against a blue-red deck, in the dark, I'm going to get this tapped. We don't have a Death Shadow. There's no need to, like, deal us a million damage here. That's a good draw, but it's still going to just jam Goyf. Get Watery Grave. Well. Maybe I should have got Breeding Pool with my land. Then next turn, I can go, like, Inquisition, Tarmogoyf. Okay. So we're playing against a Hall of... We're playing against Jeskai. Okay. So now we definitely go Inquisition, Tarmogoyf. Because we ain't getting this logic knotted. Oh, it's a through the breach deck. Yeah, I'm just going to take this search for his Kenta. And then we're just going to not play into his, our opponent's remand. And then just clock them for seven until my opponent either taps low enough where they have to play a cantrip. Yep. Yeah. We're just going to sink their mana base. Their mana. We're going to get Watery Grave. So if we do draw us a uh, if we draw a stub here, we'll just jam through this other goyf, I think. I like just limiting my opponent's clock. Yeah, this is this this stream is all about the three two life. So if I play Tarmogoyf, do you think they remand it, or do you think they mana leak it? I don't really care. They probably remand. Okay. I can't believe you'd sit here, and after all the like hard work and hardly intelligent magic that we played here, that you would say the 3-2 dream is still alive.
Like, I'm sitting here playing Magic at a very minimal rate. Like, if we'd have been, if we'd have been on top of our game, we'd have played that Tarmogoyf before attacking. I can't wait for the lag to catch up. It's coming. Don't you worry about it. Where you definitely like you definitely have to take like um You've got to take, uh, so we're going to keep in some removal in case they switch into like a board and some morons, but we're not going to keep in too much. Um, you definitely need to take weekday Dylan with a grain of salt when it comes to playing, playing tight and sideboard and tight here. Like we, we're mostly here. We get, we turn it up on the weekends, but after 12 hour workday Dylan, like, this is this is the best we can do. So we get two draws, 17 looks at a land. A Street Wraith is a redraw. A Bobble's a redraw. So we have 23 looks twice. I'm gonna keep this. Plus, like, these three cards are gas. Prefer Lou still into tight down. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna thought seize target search for Escanta. God, my opponent doesn't even have it. This is where magic gets kinda hard. Cause like this Grim Flare is pretty dead. And I just kind of want to take this Supreme Verdict, because going long, it's going to just dictate what goes on with my life. Alternatively, I could take this Lightning Helix, and then maybe my opponent doesn't path to exile me on my main phase, because they're like somewhat intelligent, but maybe they play into that. When this Supreme Verdict still knocking on our door... How do we get our opponent to mess up? I think we're going to take Lightning Helix. We're going to get our opponent to mess up here. This Grim Flare is just going to win us the game. That's a decent draw. I don't think, like, I think my opponent's, like, they're going to opt. And if they want to, like, they're going to opt here. And then I don't think my opponent's going to path on their on their main phase. I think they're going to wait, especially considering that we have. Oh, well, now they hit a land drop. It's not going to matter. So we can't quite get Delirium either way, but we can get in here. My opponent might just take a shot because they have Supreme Verdict. I don't like... I, I like running threats out pretty... Uh, what is this? Alright, well I'm going to dismember this. All right, so now now we kind of get him in a pickle because now he either opts and then he has to like one for one verdict this. This is greedy from our opponent, I think. Yeah, this is a little greedy. I mean, I like I like running out threats like whenever I get the chance to. 
when I play this deck. If we get Delirium, I think I'm going to stub this opt. We didn't get Delirium. So, but I don't, and I don't want any of these. I might want the Disdainful Stroke, but I got two counter spells. We're going to get Delirium next turn, and then I'm traversing for another Grim Flare, more than likely. We can traverse for Death Shadow next turn as well. I could just leave this on top because, like, it's going to counter what kills me. And these let me, like, more liberally protect my threats. So, yeah, we'll just leave this on top. Like, this can hear... We always know that we've got this for insulation against, um... There's the op. Let that happen. Like, it's going to have us insulated against Through the Breach. And then we can counter cards like Path or uh, Lightning Bolt going at our face if they get too low. Squad Chief, I thank you for the compliment. What do we got? Electrolyze? That's bad. Because now the Supreme Verdict answers my threat. Three, Supreme Verdict gets Death Shadow. Now we're in trouble. We kept a reactive card on top, thinking this was not going to happen. So did I double stub this? I think I double stub this so I can get another hit in with my Death Shadow. Yeah. Yeah, I still have the path. I think I have to double denial this. Just so I can get another hit in with my Death Shadow. With this Grim Flare to find me some more action. Like this feels this feels pretty bad. And it also turns off my Traverse. But. This at least gets me another activation. Pays for it. Yeah. I mean, we can't take them home with us. And this is probably getting a tap land. My moto's a little laggy. We don't have any more red cards. I boarded out all my removal, and I always forget that this Jeskai version plays um, Colonnade. Okay. All right. These play. So what do I want to do next turn? I probably want to play I don't think I want the Street Wraith I think I want to draw the Death Shadow and have um, Liliana on top afterwards that was a good hit that was a good hit for sure so now the opponent pass now 
No, I, I don't think they would one for one. I don't think they'd verdict. I, I, I don't know. But I want to, I want to be able to play Death Shadow and have Disdainful Stroke up in case they draw the, uh, the whatever it is, the Through the Breach. All right, so now we'll just run out one Death Shadow, and we'll hold this Traverse because we want Liliana, and we'll pass. And then I think that our opponent is either going to play a Snapcaster Mage here, which is going to suck because they're they're pausing. Wow. Okay. So opponents got three cards. We know one of them, but we know the other three are spells. The other four are spells. So am I supposed to jam this Liliana or traverse for another threat? I think my opponent has like a cryptic command. They either have cryptic command or like through the breach or something. So I think I'm just going to traverse for another death shadow. Play it. And then still have disdainful stroke up. And if my opponent gets like messy with this. Then we can just, we can like fight over it a little bit, depending on what they do. Something I don't know about this deck and I'm not very familiar with is if, like what kind of counter magic they play. They play. I know that the blue red one. Yeah. And like we'll, we'll die on our shield here. We'll let our opponent verdict and then we'll slam Liliana. Uh, Primeval Titan, Reality Smasher, it's Creatures. Death Shadow? No. Whatever. So now we got our opponent kind of under our boot a little bit. As long as they don't... If, if our opponent doesn't fire up this colonnade, then we're in pretty good shape. This colonnade gets active, and like this game's going to get a little more difficult. This is a search for his Kanta. D-Sphere? Okay. And our, we milled over our Decay. That's good to know. Okay. There's the Stroke. Seer Vision is a pretty good draw. It's going to dig him a little bit. Get my main man. My main man Goyf in there. Okay. We cannot pay for Mana Leak. They went top, top. So, like, let's hope they went top Emrakul, cast through the breach. Okay. That's not what they're going to do. But there's a very good chance we die after doing this. But, all right, we might as well check out what they're doing. I wouldn't be surprised if my opponent, like, kept a cryptic on top. And this eats a cryptic. Then we'll probably disdainful stroke. Like when you're behind, so a kind of a good thing is like a good thing to know is like this disdainful stroke kind of has like through the breach written on it. But when you're, oh, we gain four life. Nice. Oh, they gained, they did it to themselves. Okay. Oh, gross. There's a snapcaster. Is that something to note that like when you're at parity? With your opponent, you can't really afford to be selective with what you counter. You know, if that makes sense. Like, you just have to trade spells when you're at parity. Because if you hold your spells and they resolve their spells, then you're no longer at parity.
Yeah, I think I think we I think we covered that. I think we covered covered the the beauty of stroke and all of its greatness. Oh, well, we got a spell at least, but this this thing's gonna put us to one. So then a land or a spell kills us. My opponent gets two cracks at it. This game has made me feel like I should have lingering souls in my deck after sideboard. Like maybe they maybe they move into a not a not as much of a combo game in game one. Like these disdainful strokes, even though one of them got a cryptic command, it still felt slightly underwhelming. So maybe I'll look to board in a um prime time, yeah. Well, does it really counter worm? Like, is anybody ever actually casting the worm? I find it odd my opponent didn't just try to kill me. Get my death shadow in play. Star Wars. I, I I'm not sure. I think it's too early to talk. To talk Star Wars in Twitch chat, I don't, I don't think that's kosher. Yes, we are we are dead on board if our opponent sees it here, so we're just gonna like this is our line, you know. Yep, yeah, and they got it. So with how grindy this game is, I feel like I want. Maybe a couple copies of Lingering Souls. The Collective Brutalities, if they're moving more towards like a control deck, I don't necessarily want the Brutalities. The Disdainful Strokes might be okay. The Dismember is probably not good. And if we're bringing in Lingering Souls, then we can deal with um, whatever it is better. Um, what's that dumb card? I kind of want this Maelstrom Pulse, too, if my opponent... I don't know how heavily my opponent's relying on Detention Sphere, though. Okay. Worm. I've been watching a lot of streams with uh, with some of that sweet Worm Coil action lately. Or wor Worm... World Spiled Worm action. I have to cut a card. This Maelstrom Pulse is probably too cute. Yeah. This is like pseudo removal. Like, it doesn't kill Colonnade, but it stops Colonnade from killing me. Well, I mean, if you're bringing in, I don't necessarily think Disdainful Stroke in the Tasker Angler matchups is is right where you want to be. You know what I mean? I would like to play things first. Heater. Absolute heater. Let's see if we can not mess this one up. Alright. So we're gonna get ourselves a watery grave with this here this here delta. That's disgusting. The people polluted it. Rest in peace. Yeah, I just gotta take rest in peace. And then I'm gonna play. I probably just like thought sees something. Thought sees his path. Look to stub a cantrip. And then jam this grim flare. We got a little bit of a little bit of defense on our side. Because defense wins championships. Twenty-one people here. I think I'm appreciate everybody showing up. I think I'm going to do another stream tomorrow before I head home for Christmas. What do they do with this? What do they do? They went top bottom. That's fair. Traverse. 
you don't say. I probably will just path on my upkeep though. I feel like we I feel like we we played this song and dance last match and it just didn't really work that well. And we're gonna jam this grim flare right down my opponent's throat and stub this opt. There's that tarn. Probably gonna fetch a godless shrine. Well, now I'm gonna fetch a basic because this can get us godless shrine. There's no need to like smack ourselves that bad. Again, we're just gonna hit this. If our we're like we're we don't have ferocious, so we're not gonna be. You know, we're, we're not going to be selective with this here. Uh, stubborn denial. Beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> okay. That resolves. That means this guy's getting lightning bolted. Which is going to feel bad, but... Ah, uh, sure. So here's a question. Why not run Infernal... It, what's infernal tutor now Thelman this this is gonna be it for tonight <clears throat> this match here unfortunately what are you talking about infernal what's infernal tutor is that the one that deals you three damage you lose three life when you get to tutor something oh no infernal tutor is the one that storm plays right they went top top all right yeah, Infernal Tutor, like, yeah, that's the one that, um, that, what's that deck that's frustrating? Um, gosh, I cannot even think tonight. It's just been one of those days at work. Um, Lantern plays that card. Yeah, no, we're almost done, Mr. Cook. It is, it is just about nighttime for the home team. Yep, doesn't Lantern play, like, one or two of those? Dude, don't bolt my guy. Oh, baby. So, here's our... Here's the big question for a million dollars. We saw Supreme Verdict. We just saw our opponent go top, top. So... Oh, I should have. I didn't fetch. That was stupid. Well, now that we have this lingering souls, I think I'm just gonna go mill this. You're always hellbent. Well, I think I want to ditch this stub. The problem is I'm worried about like through the breach from our opponent. So the stub is like I think if this all goes to hell in a handbasket, I want stubborn denial. Milling Shadow does get Traverse active, but like, I could just draw it and then have more resources. And I would kind of, like, I'm debating if I want this stub or not. This is where, like, for a million dollars. I think I want to keep both of these and then draw the stub and uh, flashback Lingering Souls, then draw Death Shadow. And then, like, you know, reason with myself more. The big question that we have to ask ourselves is why we didn't fetch before that. We even talked about it. It didn't happen. Yeah, I do not think Grixis Death Shadow is about... Like, I don't think... It, not, not in game one, it's not. What is this? Lightning Bolt.
Yeah. Okay, so now we have the Death Shadow on top, but we're drawing Stub, and yeah, I mean it's not necessarily. It's a little bit slower than that, like because you sometimes you play like you know the search and find game, but. You do have the ability to, to play more of a mid game with mid game with Snapcaster and Colagon's command. So our opponent's gonna remand. We know about that. I think I just attack, then I traverse for a death shadow and I have stubborn denial up. I think that's that's our plan here. Yeah, I mean if if Grix's Death Shadow could play the cantrips and find their threats like Jundash Shadow does, then, like, that deck would just be ridiculous. So if you could take, like, the threat density versus the consistency answer resource finding thing of the cantrips, then, like, you'd be playing, like, a Delver deck in Legacy. So I know our opponent's got Remand. And I think we're going to, like, just go get Shadow. Tra we have four types. Traverse the Uvenwald. And then this goes and gets us Godless Shrine, I think. Though I might want to get an Overgrown Tomb, because traversing for, like, Tarmogoy for Grim Flare might be pretty good. Am I going to want to traverse for Grimfire next turn? I kind of think I am, so this is actually just going to get me overgrown too. Because, like, if all goes to hell in a handbasket, then um, Grimflare is going to, like, pick up the pieces better than Death Shadow. And, like, we're, we're at the same life total here. We're going to let him remand this. And then we're going to get in here again. Uh, Cully, thank you very much for supporting the stream. I appreciate you being here. Two stubs of Seer Vision. I think I like opt in that deck. I think more than Seer Visions, though. Like I, playing playing on your main phase just sucks. All right, so we figured that was going to happen, which is why we're going to get Grim Flare now to help pick up the pieces a little bit. Well, that fetch land kind of changes the game, right? The fetch land means a two-turn clock with stubborn denial back up. Grim Flare is a three-turn clock with stubborn denial back up, but finds me more resources. And I feel like this game, my opponent's got like two more resources because they've been missing land drops. So we know our opponent's got spells. So I still, I think I'm gonna go get, get Grim Flare because I, I do really want to get a hit in. I'm going to play this and fetch a Godless Shrine at the end of the turn. We're low on time. Yep. Opponent's got that. I want to know how many Supreme Verdicts this deck plays after sideboard. Top. Top, top. Be reasonable, man. Come on. What do we got? Okay. So we are hellbent.
Well, this is the this is the through the breach deck, Grant. This is like a Jess guy through the breach. We hard casting that? We might be. I'm gonna see what I draw, what I put on top of my Grim Flare, and if I want to draw one of those cards immediately, then I will hold this. I think we didn't see. I, I don't remember you being here in game one. And that's only when we saw it. So now I think we're just going to put this on the bottom. And then we're going to stack Tarmogoyf, then Stub. And I don't think that we're going to. We're going to cycle this street right. We're going to cast this. We're just going to. We're going to hold this guy. Especially when our opponent just went top, top. So they got to have something going on. Okay. Colin 8 is. Bad news. Yeah, it was the, it was the Jess guy deck. The, then I was like, all right, we got an idea what's going on there. No. I put a, oh god, a cryptic command. And we're not gonna fetch because we have a Tarmogoyf on top. Alright, check. Man. So what do we got? We got traverses and grim flares left. All right. There's a disdainful stroke we talked about that sucked. But now we're in a lot of. Now we need to peel lingering souls because our opponent can just fire this colonnade up, or they can't, or they might not. Like that's all right. Okay. Cast this. What is this? What are they doing? That's pretty bad. Cryptic command? Okay. We have another cryptic? Jesus. This one's going to be difficult to win. And again, we just got, we got to the late game against them. And we just, we couldn't quite shut the door. Oh, God, we went from 3-0 to 3-2. This is totally, what's his name? Squaw's fault? Where is that? Squaw, this is totally Squatchy's fault. I'm just saying. Wow, they're just they're just like I mean they've they've got it they're sitting on a cryptic, so they can afford to be a little bit conservative. So it is just a cryptic command. So we need to like go exactly Lingering Souls doesn't even do it, right? Because they just go cryptic tap. No, Oh, that was sad. 
We just like moped out these last two games. And maybe it was like getting the Grim Flare while we were at parity. But at the time that I got the Grim Flare, it was a three turn clock. I'm not sure. I'd have to think about that because it was a three turn clock when I got Grim Flare against like two cards in my opponent's deck. Or two cards. Oh, no. Well, Moto's dying. Okay. Two cards in my opponent's hand versus. Um, I guess we'll open up. We'll open up tre the treasure, our pity chest. I still have four more to sell from last night. Crush of Tentacles, Throne of Empires, huh? An Ambuscape. But all right, hey, I really, uh, I really appreciate everybody for being here tonight. I'm gonna be on tomorrow during the day. I don't really have a lot of work to do right now, and I've, I've done. I actually had my seventh straight twelve-hour day at work today, so. Not like seven in a row, like the weekend was there, but you know, you know how it is. I'm just I've like been working too much, so I only got to work like four hours tomorrow, and then I'm off for the holiday. So I do hope to, um, I do hope to. I go host Jim Davis backslash. Let me do this. We got Jim Davis MTG. So yeah, I'm gonna stream tomorrow. I think I'm gonna stream some lands and probably some Death Shadow and maybe something else. I'm not exactly sure, but yeah, I hope everyone has a good rest of the night and tunes in tomorrow. So have a good day.